uh, did you grow up, uh, did like the usual stuff in school in terms of like uh, go to band or uh, gym, uh, take gymnastics or uh, did you have any sports or any musical uh, inclinations when you're growing up? Well, I'm tall, so it doesn't lend itself to, you know, I'm five, eight and a half. So uh, getting that much flipping, you know, over and over isn't real easy, but enough that it got me uh, into cheerleading. I was a cheerleader through school. Mm-hmm. And uh, and so that was a, a really good experience. Um, I'm so glad to say that so many of my friends, thanks mostly to Facebook, mm-hmm. a wondrous thing, even though my children say it's been ruined since you didn't have to have a college ID number to get in it, but oh, is that uh, right? Facebook I didn't know that. You reunited a lot of us from high school. Really? You, have, you have to have a college ID now to get into get on Facebook. No, no, no. But originally you did. Oh, originally that's right. It was oh, college. right. Okay. Yeah. In the beginning. Yeah. Right. Okay. Yeah. When it was yeah. Facebook so, fa- ruined. Yeah. yeah. Well, what are you going to do? So um, ruined. So you so, were yeah you're, doing the cheerleader thing mm-hmm. in high school. I was right. a good. I think I think I was a good kid. Yeah. You know, I'm not sure that my mom and Richie Cunningham may have thought that, but they were super good kids. Well, so. maybe, maybe we'll get them on the horn here maybe and find not. out exactly what they think of all this. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I'm kidding. So, uh, so <laughs> my mom, she, she, yeah. she knows me well and she loves me the way I am. I, I know. I'm I, her dreamer. I know. That's why I never let my sister on the show because all she ever does is talk about all the crap I did as a kid. They didn't, they didn't even think that I was in, in the family. They thought I was adopted because I was so outrageous in my behavior. But anyway. So, Pamela, so Pamela if you're listening, the number's 209. Oh, shut up, <laughs> Daniel. Yeah, she is listening, as a matter of fact. Anyway. Uh, uh, so, so uh, you, what, you got out of high school and uh, graduated and uh, moved on? Yeah, got out of high school and uh, took a look around, and, and uh, I took a little different path where most of the kids went off to college uh-huh. or trade schools were still real popular then. Mm-hmm. Uh, I joined the military. Oh, good for you. there weren't a lot of women in the military. Hmm? Good for you. <laughs> no, I mean it, really. Well, th- thanks for your service. I no, appreciate it. Anybody who goes, look, anybody who gets out of high school and they decide that they're going to go make a career, you know, go in the military, my hat's off to them. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. You know, though, in, in, but, and I feel awkward whenever that is is said, or when you're in a some kind of auditorium and they ask the veterans to stand up. I, I always do do that. But I feel bad because there was no war going on. So it was a different kind of thing. Doesn't matter. For me, it does, was an expression d- d- not, just d- fearless, I'm gonna tell you, not d- an enemy. Um, it doesn't matter. I'm going to tell you why. Because it's all about preparedness. It's all about preparedness. You were in position in the event that we were attacked like we were on September 11th, 2001. You were in position. And that's all that matters to me. I don't care. And I don't care if we have guys going, and women go in the service and nothing's going on. Matter of fact, I prefer that. <laughs> Very much, uh, but um, the re- the, the, no, really. I mean, but the reality is, is like anybody who does that. In my opinion, man, uh, my nephew uh, went in the Marines. Talk about straightening his life out! Unbelievable. This was a kid with ADHD, ADD. We well, didn't name it all. He's got them all, and and yet he it, it turned his life around completely. So I'm all about like you know I. My older brother said that if he didn't know that I was going to try and get into the service because he went into Vietnam, he said that he would have broken both my legs and sent me to Canada because the Vietnam War was being run by a bunch of politicians and, he should have, and they should have let the generals do what they do best and that's break things and kill people. And uh, they wouldn't let him do that. So it was, a, it was a bogged down mire, a big mess for our guys. That's why it was – well, that's why we didn't win because of the politicians. But anytime anybody goes into the service – they have my sincere gratitude. And that, that extends to you too, Kim. Absolutely. You were in a state of readiness, and that's what matters. Well, the, I was in a state of readiness for, that's right, my watch to end, and so we could beat it to happy hour on the beach. But right. if anything had come up, I'm no scaredy cat. Okay. I'm no scaredy cat. Be straight. So, so what, did, what did you well, do in the military? I went in. Where, where'd you go to, where'd you do, where'd you do, huh? where'd you do boot camp? Uh, Orlando. Oh, okay. Well, that's a... That's and a, yeah. they... I had no idea. Well, I chose the Navy because I liked their uniforms the best. I mean, a lot of thought went into this, mm-hmm. it, it, not the least of which was defending my country if called upon. But I went down there and talked to the recruiters. They were all in the same building, and, and, and that's how I chose. I thought the Air Force, they looked like Cub Scout mothers, and I didn't want that. Uh-huh. And they, the women were wearing these jaunty berets and That recruiter was very cool. So next thing you know, I'm on my way to boot camp. I had never known anybody in the military. My grandfather's, but Mm -hmm. I had no idea what I was in for. And what happened? And it was... 
know, Private Benjamin. Oh, yeah. I came with all of my makeup and my hot rollers, and <laughs> it was going to be Orlando right there, Disney World. I had my short sets. I had swimsuits. Mm -hmm. I had everything, and you should have seen the look on my face when they took it all away. Yeah, right? Yeah. Bye-bye. It, it was terrible. Yeah. Oh, yeah. 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 You don't belong to you anymore. It was terrible. No. And I can't color your hair. I was already coloring my hair by then. I had this black hair kind of rolling the Farrah Fawcett haircut, but it was black, so kind of like Farrah share. Oh, yeah. And Well, that was all the rage. I couldn't even do that. Yeah. I got, oh, there you go. Yeah. I got caught. Uh-oh. I got caught in boot camp. Uh-oh. Going to get my hair dyed. Yes. Oh. But you know, fearless. Oh. How many latrines, <laughs> how many latrines did they make it clean for that one? <laughs> it was a lot of push-ups. Yeah, no that. kidding. Huh? They would just wear you down physically. So yeah, they saw me coming. Right. Um, but I, I, my grandfather was an air traffic controller, and and that sounded cool. And I passed the test. So you, everybody gets out of boot camp. They don't kill you and eat you. And um, uh, it, it wasn't it wasn't that hard. I I know when to keep my mouth shut. Mm -hmm. And it was good training to learn that all of military. Mm -hmm. Uh, with good training to know when to speak, when not to speak. Uh, I think everyone should do some time in service or as a server in a restaurant or some kind of customer service job. Absolutely. I think that's what, if I were president, mm -hmm. that's what I would do. There would be national service in military, as a server, or in a call center. You hear that, boys and girls? Are you, you listening? Learn how to be all right, so, so Kim, Kim, Kim Paris for president, and mm -hmm. you would definitely see some kind of service. All right, there you go. All right, so uh, how did you find like uh, getting into uh, being an air traffic controller? I mean, wh where were you stationed for that? I was stationed uh, NAS Corpus Christi, which for an air traffic controller is a great place. There's yeah, a training guess. command. So yeah. there were, golly, 1,300, 1,400 ensigns going through flight training at any one time. Right. Uh, so two sets of parallel runways mattered not which way the wind was blowing. Right. You could have full-on up day in and day out. Uh, the downside is that it wasn't like the fleet no. because they were also teaching them how to be officers. Mm -hmm. So for someone like me, mm -hmm. this is an adjustment to, you know, because you're, you're, you're micro manager, you're, it's just not the fleet. Okay. But it was all in good fun and we had great stories and, you know. Mm -hmm. <laughs> So, so how long were you in well, air traffic? Well, how in long? There, but how long were you air traffic controller down in Corpus Christi? Four years. Wow. All four years. Well, in disbanded. Yeah, I know. On the beach, right there, South Padre Island. The uh, the detailers, though, see air traffic controllers. That's when Reagan disbanded Patco. Right. And he busted the union. Right. And yeah. So Thank God. Military controllers. Yeah, yeah, he fired yeah. all the air traffic controllers. Well, Good. you know, and that Good. makes sense. I, I love that. Uh, you know, yeah. who, how, who thinks that you can give the president yeah. an ultimatum and mm -hmm. that you will prevail? That yeah. does not make sense. I, I don't care what your union leadership tells you. You <laughs> cannot, by definition, give the president an ultimatum and expect him to say, oh, sorry, you're right. <laughs> yeah, uh, unless he happens you to be lose. Yeah, unless he happens to be the uh, the one that's in the White House now who would bend over backwards whatever they said, I guarantee you. <laughs> Let's do it here. I am waxing nostalgic again. Yeah. So, uh so but air traffic controllers can't be just picked up and rotated. There's a certification process in each airport and um so I was lucky and it, it was a bad deal for guys that were on board ship or in some less appealing places. I just got lucky. Loved my job. Um, I was good at it, not because I'm a genius, but it's just well suited to mm -hmm. the way I think. And it was challenging and it, it gave me a lot of confidence. Right. And it did it does kinda make you a bit of a snot though, because then you ask people when you're out what they do for a living. Right. Only because you're waiting for them to ask you. Right. And then you can say I'm an air traffic controller. Yeah. I mean, come on. That is cool. Is that, that is wrong? very cool. I mean, if you, if you can't fly the planes, at least you can tell them how to land, and that's got to be cool. <laughs> seriously. Oh, you know, it's funny is – go ahead. No, seriously. That's got to be cool. You know what's funny, though, is that there were not a lot of women in my rate. And there were women in the military, certainly not like there is now. So we were a rather rare breed anyway. Uh -huh. um, but in my rate, AC, there were not many of us. And pilots were not accustomed to hearing a woman's voice. Oh, yeah, that had to and be a bit so of a shock to them, you, right? Exactly. How, and they're 
most of them are, apl- are afraid of their airplanes to begin with because mm-hmm. they're learning. But then you've got the guys from the fleet because we had a tremendous amount of transient traffic. So how do you convey authority mm-hmm. and unflappability? Because women's voices don't lend themselves to, lend itself to that, and and especially if they're not used to hearing it. Um, so how did you deal think, with that? How, how, did you you, know that uh, how did you compensate for that? Did you get a deeper voice all of a sudden? Yeah. You speak, you, you just learn to speak with authority. You, you lower your voice. You, you, you uh, keep it short. Mm-hmm. You, you just have to state it with authority. Right. Uh, well, why, why, why don't the you give us... Why don't you give us... Kim, why don't you give us an example Some of what you sounded like? Talk. As a, yeah, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Yeah, air traffic to Mark Marshall. Um, Please shut up. You know something. I bet. I, I but I haven't done this. Unlike my friends that stayed in it, mm-hmm. you know they oh, they're on, still doing it. Easy. It's dead easy. Speedbird zero zero two. Climb to flight level three five zero. Turn <laughs> left heading. Turn left heading three one zero. Come on, how easy is that? <laughs> yeah, right. How easy is that? I have no over. idea what you just said. Over. <laughs> yeah, right. Over. No, You've no, right. Over. Just... No, but can you? What, exactly what I said. Well, you know, speaking of that, though, women's voices, mm-hmm. you know that Maggie Thatcher had worked with, uh, Daniel, maybe you can tell us about this. You're, you're an expert of all things uh, English and royal. Um Maggie Thatcher had voice training at a voice coach. I think Sarah Palin would do well to have one. I think all of our women politicians, frankly. But you listen to her. Uh, Daniel, she came from House of Commons, right? So you listen to old uh, audio of her then. She sounds entirely different. Really? Than well, she, she had, did, ele- she had you know. elocution lessons. Is that what it is? Uh, oh, yeah, yeah. She had elocution lessons because... I didn't know she, that. She was, a, she, was a grocer's, she was a grocer's daughter from, uh, from Lincoln. Oh really? And and she had a proper northern Lincoln accent, so she had to have elocution lessons because in those days in the House of Commons you had to speak with the Queen's English. Right, right. Yes, very proper. Yes. Mm. Huh. These she, days her, her these, voice was days, higher yeah. and So so what was she cottony? Uh, yeah, her voice was higher. It sounds shrill. Women have to be careful to not sound shrill. I think that that we do not, uh, and this isn't PC to say, I'm sure, nothing is PC anymore, yeah, really. but uh, we do not naturally exude gravitas. Ah, gravitas. And that's especially difficult for Republican women because because we're so good on the outside, we are just so hot, hot, hot on the you know, we're good on the inside. <laughs> yeah. We're hot, hot, hot on the outside. But mm-hmm. the better looking you are, the less gravitas that you have. Who makes uh, these rules and up? So it, it's the same thing to me. I, I, who makes these rules up, really? I mean, come on. I, I couldn't even say gravitas oh, 10 years even, ago. I didn't know what it meant. wrong? I couldn't even spell gravitas back then. But you have to have it. It's required. <laughs> Got to have some. If you, you can't get it some, when you see it, don't you? Yeah, you see it at Walmart all the time. Yeah, lots of gravitas. <laughs> yeah, hanging out of their britches. No, <laughs> that bad gravity. Oh <laughs> uh, yeah, that's what it is. I, all right, I got them backwards. I'm sorry. So anyway, so you did air traffic controlling <laughs> for uh, for four for four years. You must have seen some really interesting things though in your, in that vocation. Um, well, sure. There's all kinds of of stories. Y- you know, the lasting memories, apart from some of the the antics that we all have, whether you're in the military or not at that age. Mm-hmm. Um, but. The lasting memories, when I went in in 79, we had guys that, because I was young, I was 18, so everybody older than me, they had been in Vietnam. Uh-huh. And a lot of them had cross-trained. You know, once we were leaving, these guys cross-trained from whatever they were doing into air traffic control. And, and so there would be times, I, I remember so clearly, when the tower would get fogged in. Oh, really? So you break down. They send people home. We're not going to be running operations because it's fogged in, and there just has to be a small crew there to launch search and rescue mm-hmm. the helicopters, right, if something happens. Other than that, and you're, you're broken down into a small group, and, and even the atmosphere, because the tower, you're sitting up there way high, and it's foggy, and the glow of the equipment, you're all sitting there. It's almost like, yeah, like seances at a slumber party, but... Mm-hmm so much more serious and some of these guys would start sharing their stories um and 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 that didn't happen all the time but it was occasional and it left such an impression on me Hmm. um where they came from what they 
endured, what they sacrificed. Right. Um, and it, it, it really helped.